They'll take the shot with six seconds. No, they took it early, but Brand got inside position. Oh! Oh, Magetti, Magetti, Spaghetti! Holy mackerel! Corey Anton Maggetti, born November 12, 1979. When it comes to sports and the athleticism it takes to be elite in sports, we should all hope to be as blessed as today's feature. Corey Maggetti was a natural athlete that may have even been ahead of his time as a do-it-all two-way wing that would fit perfectly in today's game. He had the perfect size for the shooting guard position at 6'6", and was athletic and physical enough to play small forward in any era of basketball. He was ranked in the top 20 in high school, good enough to secure a scholarship from the Duke Blue Devils, also good enough to leave after just one season, becoming one of the few that left early in Coach K's system in the 90s and 2000s. Upon his entry into the NBA as the 13th pick in the 99 NBA draft, Maggetti was relying heavily on what he did in high school, becoming a top 20 player, 5-star recruit and McDonald's All-American, and also the potential many teams saw in him as the prototypical wing player sought after in the late 90s and early 2000s. With Michael Jordan, Kobe, and Vince Carter building and continuing to mold the perfect NBA wing, Corey Maggetti was supposed to have been damn near can't miss. At Duke, although he didn't average gaudy numbers like Quentin Richardson, who won Freshman of the Year in 1999, and his future teammate, he showed that on a stacked Duke team that made it to the NCAA Finals and would have won had anyone else but Langdon touched the ball in the last 30 seconds for Duke, that he was ready to fit a specific role in the NBA. More than numbers and stats could show. He shot the ball nicely at 34% from 3 and 52% field goal percentage. He defended the other team's best wing night in and night out and when it came to filling a lane on the break, offensive putbacks and electrifying plays, Maggetti was more than capable and ready. Of the shooting guards and small forwards taken in front of him, only Richard Hamilton had a better pro career. The homework was done and the expectations were high for Maggetti to step in almost right away and help win games and compete with the other up and coming NBA wings and one day at least become an all-star. He's never made an NBA all-star team in his 14 NBA seasons and of those only made it to the playoffs once in his career, losing in the second round in 2006 to the Phoenix Suns. After the bulk of his career with the Clippers, he became a journeyman playing for bad teams ever since where he could score points that didn't lead to his team contending. I wouldn't say he had a bad or disappointing career, just that for these reasons, it could have been much better. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. You can also send a super thanks by clicking the button below. Enjoy the video. Corey Maggetti was a 6'6 shooting guard small forward from Melrose Park, Illinois, and starred in Oak Park for Fenwick High School. Because physically he excelled a lot faster than his peers, he often played power forward for his high school team, showing he had all-around skills and a coachable attitude to adjust to what the team needed. It made him a McDonald's All-American in 1998 and an attractive prospect all throughout his freshman year at Duke. He had the National Player of the Year Elton Brand on his team, along with All-American Trajan Langdon and two other future NBA players, and still the Orlando Magic saw enough to trade for him on draft night, having the Sonics take him 13th for the Magic for two-time NBA champion Horace Grant at the time and draft picks. They saw enough to feel he didn't have the potential they thought and moved on. He was traded to the Clippers, where he spent the next eight seasons on losing Clipper teams minus 0506 and played just good enough to be a perennial all star snub. Stunt number one, leaving Duke early. Corey Maggetti was a lottery pick leaving after just his freshman season at Duke, so no, it wasn't all bad that he seized the opportunity to live out his dreams as early as possible and secure a financially successful future. But in every other way than that, leaving early maybe could have waited. Or could it? 
looming over Corey Maggetti and Duke's head was an investigation into Maggetti's eligibility, accusing him of taking money from his AAU coach Myron Piggy, who was sentenced in 2001 to more than three years in prison for conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud and failure to file a federal income tax return. A year before, and of course after he had already left Duke early, Maggetti signed a sworn statement admitting he indeed took $2,000 from the coach. Duke was not fined nor had to vacate games from Corey's freshman season because the NCAA ruled they had no knowledge of what was done before Maggetti enrolled at Duke. I'm not certain that was why Corey Maggetti decided to leave after his freshman year, but considering it was clear he had more to work on at Duke, who won the championship two years later when Corey would have been a junior and polished his shooting, IQ, and leadership, but it does seem a good time to make sure he was long gone by the time a ruling and news eventually broke of his infractions, leading to his former coach given over three years in prison. Beyond that, Corey didn't exactly land in the best fitting spot or spots depending on how you look at the Clippers in the early 2000s and what that team meant for his career. Orlando was a fairly young, rebuilding team at the time and not sure what they wanted except a big splash, exciting player to fill the seats. Corey was thought to be but was slow to develop so they gave up on him in just one year. The Clippers were a solid place he could have opportunity, live in a great city, and a chance to lead them where they weren't used to going at the time. But it just wasn't the right time. Partially because Maggetti hadn't yet become ready enough to do what it took to lead them to winning. Maybe a few more years at Duke would have helped? Risky choice. Financially, he made the right decision. Readiness wise, no. Stunt number two, the Clippers. Secondly, I think him landing and staying with the LA Clippers for the better part of his career also stunted his growth because it offered no real challenges to push Corey over the hump and finally enter the star player realm he was supposed to with his physical gifts perfect for basketball. The Clippers were a downtrodding team that throughout the 90s decade only made it to the playoffs three seasons. They hadn't made it in three years before Maggetti got there and like mentioned, only one time in Corey's eight seasons. He was joined by former Stunted Growth alumni Lamar Odom, Darius Miles, and Quentin Richardson, whom together the Clippers intended to create one of the first super teams of all young guys and later all-star Elton Brand. This core would go on to be one of the biggest bust stories of the 2000s and most of that was because the organization had foundational issues in its front office clearly for decades and a core that were too immature and lacked real leadership to have the success they potentially could have. The Clippers signed him for 5 years 35 million in 2003 and another 5 years 48 in 2008 so all wasn't bad. Just the whole winning thing, he never developed enough to figure that out. Stunt number three, not quite good enough. And lastly, I always saw Corey Maggetti as a solid player but just not quite good enough in areas many expected he would dominate to say he reached his full potential on the court. Like he was just right under star level, which is why even with opportunity in LA, he never made an all-star team. He shot the 3 okay, but never above average at any point in his career, even having a few seasons shooting in the 20s from distance. As a driver, he never developed good enough handles for where his physical body could take him, where if he did have the creation ability off the dribble, could have been unstoppable driving to the rim. He was a solid rebounder, but for what you expected a 6'6", former power forward, jump out the gym guy to average, just not quite good enough. Kobe, less physical and less explosive than Corey, averaged more career rebounds. I say this to say maybe expectations were too great for Corey Maggetti because he did turn out okay as a player in the league and maybe everyone that's blessed as he was isn't always supposed to be stars and put up big numbers. Corey Maggetti, some say should've, but it just wasn't in the cards. All in all, Corey Maggetti was lucky to have the career and longevity he had and had he done anything different, things could've played out a lot worse. 
a lot wasn't in his control as a pro and his game suffered a bit for it. A small bit, but he did average over 16 points a game for his career and played a long time in the NBA. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Chipboy JC stunted growth and I'm out.